I truly don't. And it's all love. If you want to know why, you got to stay tuned to PVM. Positive vibes, maybe. Live talk show. I am your host. One half of the duo. Well, the duo is expanding. You know what I mean? Shout out to Dash. But one half of the initial, the original, the origins, Jetty A track. How you doing? How you living? We going to get into interesting topic tonight where we talk about something that has been hashtag to popularize the narratives to even being somewhat of a psychological condition FOMO fear of missing out and the reason why I really I'm not missing shit when it comes to nothing you dig what I'm saying the dash is up in here Tion Wells is up in here what's going on with y'all let me set up the the topic for tonight's conversation. And while I'm doing so, if y'all don't mind, DM us an instance in which you had a fear of missing out. Because don't get me twisted at all. I've had fear of missing out regarding certain things. Just not why I've been off of this whole entire social media period for the last month. I have not been missing social media. My life has been looking smooth as far as putting things in a real life perspective. Without having to go on Facebook, IG, or Twitter every five seconds. Shit is ridiculous. For real. But we gonna jump into it. But um, yeah. Send us a DM. Drop a comment. You know. Send us a message. Let us know the last time y'all had FOMO, what was it about? How did y'all feel? And how did you get past it? How did you super, how did you supersede past the emotions of feeling that you were missing out on something while you were either taking care of something or life just deviated you or put you onto a detour in which you had no choice but to sit down and let some things fly? Now, with that being said, and with the topic being pinned, about to start tonight's conversation the way it should be, the way it would be, could be, and the way that it is. By bringing in the other half of everything that you know, PV. What up, player? I don't know which. How you feeling? How you feeling? Cool, man, I'm crazy, man. How you living? I'm cool. I'm chilling, I'm chilling, bro. Right on, it's right good on. to see you. Like the stacks in the background. Who did hey, the mom. paintings? Hey, mom. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This one right here uh, belongs to that African butterfly. So shout out to Nimade, that African butterfly. Um, she had eyes sustained some damage onto the painting during my moving from the northeast out to where I currently am in my wife's version. You know what I'm saying? So I had to take some time and try to figure out how I was going to cover up a large hole and still make it look smooth. And I finally did it so sometime soon we're gonna make sure that that African butterfly gets her pain I ain't gonna put it fully on camera though because you know what I mean that hurts. That she gives me the rights. I'm just holding on to I get my job. That's her. So I asked her for that, you know what I'm saying? But how you doing though, man? What's going on with you? I'm chilling, I'm feeling good. It's Sunday and you so you already know the vibes. Feeling comfy. You know, trying to stay dry, out the rain, you know, been coming down all day. But, yeah, outside, outside of that, you know, I've been feeling good. Right on. Who's all up in here? I am Khalifa Dormon. What's going on with you? And um, Box, Box, Rashad. If I if I slaughtered your name, please forgive me. And please send the enunciation. I'm slapping the enunciation on your name. I will get it down. I promise that I did a live with you once. Yes, you did. I do remember that you came on for a live and you joined us on a, a question regarding a conversation that we had a few lives ago. So we do appreciate you joining us. Welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. So how you been though overall? Like, you know, like this past month. Like what's what's been the vibes? You wanna fill us in on what you've been doing or you just wanna keep nah, that mystery for now? Um we're gonna 
gonna keep identities like this. I ain't letting nobody know who is what as far as what is what. But you know, I did I did have a child, I had a daughter, uh, about three weeks ago now. I wanted to keep everything under wraps because I don't believe in letting things go when it comes to certain things when my presence is required as far as my mental, my emotional, my physical and my spiritual. You know what I mean? And um I also needed to take a diet break off of social media, so I disappeared off of social media for about a month. You know what I mean? Get my thing real, be centered, be organized, and put perspective back into my life as far as the things that I know I need to get straight, as far as um, providing for my daughter, providing for my daughter. Viewed within me as far as talent that comes to fruition without having or with having the least amount of distractions available. I can date that. That's right on. That's right on. That's right on. So, how, how's the detox been for you? You know, like, has it been refreshing? I miss none of this shit. <laughs> great. great. That's great. great. And how about the uh unfollow Jetty? You know, how that's been moving, like, because they at least like shifted your algorithms, especially with being out. It's my, my algorithm is so clean, it's, it's so much more clean than that. You, you're not going to be able to get away from IGs, littering, suggestions based upon your likes and based upon people that follow you and you follow, you can't really get away from that. It's integrally based, it's, it's integrally tied into the system though, because IG is a like-based platform. It's a follow and a like-based platform. You can't get rid of that. But because I got rid of um, the need for me to, to, to sustain myself on the platform for such a long time, and because I have followed so many people and encouraged people to unfollow me all my time, I get directly to the people that I want to get to. And even if I don't get directly to them, the suggestions are based more upon my direct life than peripheral life. Things that really make sense to where I am, as opposed to things that the IG algorithm has been holding on to for years, based upon me being on this platform for about a decade and some change. Alright, that's smooth. That's smooth. That's that's good because that kind of takes me well to to your topic, uh, the fear of missing out. Because honestly, that's why I feel like IG be gearing the algorithms for it because they be feeling like everybody is so geared to missing out on everything. You know, especially like news pertaining to like their favorite artists or their favorite people. Like that's why I like. Like when you said when you said you was doing it, like it started resonating in my head, resonating in my head, and something I should consider too, because like my algorithm it played me like the same ten, fifteen people mm -hmm. over and over again, and I started realizing after a while, you know, it's because those are the people I frequently talk to the most. So of course it's gonna keep me in the know of what it is because that's what IG is geared up to do, like keep you in the know of what you want to do. But the thing is, I don't always want to be in the know, you know, of what my people are doing because I I communicate with them so much. I already have an idea of what they want to know. So what I want to see when I turn on the timeline is more inspiration, more stuff I don't know, stuff I if I'm not aware of, stuff I'm not educated up on. So when the timeline is geared toward that, it makes it harder for me as a consumer, you know. So that's where my biggest gripe was IG is. And honestly, when you said the topic, you know, the fear of missing out, like it, it kind of like opened up a, a idea of like different things that we're affected by. Like, and I honestly, I had a question where I wanted to post to you, like, do you feel like the fear of missing out is like a good thing at times, you know, because I started seeing like the qualities that could be embarked if you did have that fear of missing out, like how you could be motivated to want to strive to do something quicker or to do something differently than you've done before. Because um, I started not only thinking about how I've been in positions where I felt fear, but also times where that fear has driven me mm -hmm. to do good, you know. So how, how about you? Um, I live by one principle as far as fear is concerned. So I don't, I don't now anymore. I've had this when I was so dead centered on making something happen with my 
my heart. I was out every day while I was sick with my mom. And then um, when the, the pandemic hit, hit a little bit, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't going out like that. You know, it was all stopped, you know what I mean? Not even all, but it completely shut down. It completely shut down. This is how you So, um, yeah, I had it before. I know how to I, I don't feel like I, I, I walk in the line, you know what I mean? So when I'm outside of whatever the popular is, when I'm outside of that, I'm breaking up. Part of the part of Let me know if I'm going to hear me like this. Please let me know if I can hear me like this. But I, I, I am now where the more I pull myself away from things and the more I allow to get some more aim and move and order just to do what it does. I, I don't care about what people are doing. I'm on the next. I take this time to work on the things that's going to make sense. I'm not catching up, nigga. I'm going to catch up. Like, that shit don't make sense. Why would I? If I'm trying to catch up to y'all or whoever y'all are, that means I focusing enough so when I'm pulled away from something, that's it. I'm focused on myself. They said that it's a weird echo and it's a bad feedback that I'm receiving. I'm not too sure why. You apologize. Yeah. I thought it was my phone though. Like I can hear you clear. It's just like after you talk, it is the echo like that falls out, and it kind of like stretches to make it seem like a little longer than it actually is. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Not too sure be completely honest with you. I, do, I did get a new phone, y'all. Uh, if you know if it does the data plan for this phone, is working. This is just my my media phone, so uh, it might be where the house. It might be because the no data plan is using Wi Fi. So it might be that. Not too sure, but I don't know how to do it. That's all good. You know, technology be what it is, you know. We can't even control that. Like, and honestly, I, I, I feel like, you know, the, the cell phones are geared up against us, you know, like they want to cause problems. Like the new ones give you issues, the old ones give you issues, they all give you issues. <laughs> Like it just is what it is at this point. But do you feel like um the the need that that fair missing out is like it's security based? Like I I know you mentioned it earlier, like you felt like you were you was off alignment, like whenever you felt that way, because um and I'm glad that you agree that way, because I do feel like it's insecurity based too, because. When I thought about all the times I felt like there was a fear of missing out, there was always this insecurity within myself, like whether I felt like I was doing enough to get the job done or like maybe I felt like there were ways I weren't, I wasn't exercising that could have been exercised, you know, to make my whatever I was trying to push at that time get along. And it was always like I was bad on myself and that's where the that urge or the or the need or that feel of you know what I'm not doing enough I'm not where I should be I'm not I'm not I'm not doing as everybody else would be and like I even had this experience like within my own friend group and like the people I circle around like just looking at their lives and where like they went comparing it comparing it to mine and I actually spent like a little period of my life where you know like. Like, I hate to admit it, but I was, like, comparing my life to those around me, like, my inner circle where, like, I'm, like, seeing the success they're getting. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, well, damn, we got the same education. We've been afforded the same opportunities. Like, we've been afforded the same, honestly, everything. And But why is it, you know, we've been assigned everything almost similar, but you're succeeding and I'm failing, you know. And, like, I kind of was looking at myself where I'm just like, well, damn, like, am I... Am I not doing this? Am I not doing that? Like, and that kind of was beating up on my character a little bit. And that's really where my biggest fear of missing out was. Because it was just like, not only like I feel like I was just missing out like on, I guess, leveling up, but I also felt like the my circle was running away from me, you know, like the, the, my peers. Like, I felt like, you know, like I started off in this group, we all had the same skill set, but, but somewhere along the line, everybody starts to pass to me. 
and I didn't know why they were surpassing me. And that honestly was the biggest frustration and the hurdle for me because it was like, it was it was like a jealousy that I had towards them, but it wasn't jealous of them. It was more so jealous of what they were doing and the fact that I couldn't do what they were doing. And that was really what was beating me up the most. And that fear of missing out was, was driving me crazy because like, I would, social media will play the biggest part because, you know, uh, social media, you see the highlights of everybody's life. So I would be seeing the highlights of the, their life and all the achievements, but never like the hard work they're putting in behind the closed door. So, it, so in my mind, it's just like, well, damn, like, how they stay winning? Like, how do you stay winning? You know, like, but, um, yeah, that's where, that's where for me, it lies, that insecurity, you know, that yeah, insecurity I, in myself. You when know. I suffered yeah. from FOMO, when I believed in it, when I was a victim of it, my main thing was, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I was, now, it was, but I don't think that was the greater fear, but me falling back, or me, or me going backwards. That's, that's what it is. Greater fear of me going backwards. Building up my name in a certain a certain networks. The things that I invested at the talent, as far as my art, music, and not being consistent enough to see it through. That was the greatest fear. So it wasn't like I was missing out per se, even though I was. My thing was backwards. I didn't like the, the, the perspective, the possibility of going backwards by not being. And the funny thing is, and this is something I say a lot, it's crazy. I asked y'all why the echo so crazy about but like if I'm on a has no doubt it's connected to Wi Fi and it, because I'm on a Wi Fi I'm sure we, I'm not sure, but I do a podcast. Uh we we gonna figure out something we're gonna figure out something. We're gonna figure out something. Um but I might have to talk like just for the to into a speech as much as my mom say taking step forward and two steps back and he didn't nor did nor have nor have I and that was the greater fear. the greater fear was taking X amount of steps forward and taking X times two amount of steps backwards. But sometimes, often, you have to take steps to move forward in a better, in a more stronger way because it's not clear. This shit more like a ladder than anything else. It is not linear. Deep thought and the lyricism what's going on with you. Yeah, I, I ain't seeing no comments no more. Then my jaw just froze up. I don't know what Instagram I'm doing. But yeah, I do like that that the whole two two steps back. I mean, two steps forward, one step back. Cause I I that's part of where my root of fear lies now. You know, like my fear of missing out. Cause I'll say right now that's that's probably the biggest thing for me. Like the the whole I'm I'm petrified at this point in my life. You know, like with us being in our thirties to be taking steps back. Although I know, you know, we need to take steps back in order to progress, you know. But even in that, that's where my biggest fear is, you know, with tackling onto things like I've always I've all well, since we hit thirty 
or like since I hit 30 personally, like I've been having this fear in my head with everything I do in life. Like, and that is always been, it's been, well, since I, like I said, since I hit 30, it's been with this mindset of does this progress me or does this set me back, you know, and trying to weigh those pros and cons with each situation that I'm in. And as I get older, you know, time becomes more critical to me. I don't know if that's like old age setting in or if that's just like, you know, maybe like what I've been hearing all this, my whole life is just finally just starting to set in, you know, as far as like the wisdom. But I'm becoming more mindful of like my time and how I allocate it and what I, and what I do and allocating it. Like I'm more mindful, even in my tent, in my, in my off time where I'm just like, okay, you know, what am I trying to, where am I? Where are my goals? Where am I trying to get down? What am I trying to do? And that fear of missing out is like what's pushing me every day to do that. You know, like to get me out to bed. Like that's that's really my motivating factor because like that fear of missing out is what's motivating me to like chase the lifestyle I want for myself and my family. It's like I'm not even like or it's like I'm using the fear, but it's not like fear like I'm competing it against others how I used to in my past. It's more so fear towards myself, like fear that I die and I won't live up to all the expe all the expectations I have for myself, like personally, like, and that's what's nagging at me. It's just like, you know what, like that fear, that fear I have where I'm just like, yo, I'm not living the life I want to live. I need to push myself to get there. That's what's pushing me. Like, even within like my relationships and like how I, I move, like, I'll, I'll tell you this, Daddy. I had a situation earlier today where I'm I was on the phone with a friend, and like normally and historically, my ego would have just like supersided the moment, and it wouldn't. And like we got into a little back and forth where like my ego, where I knew in the moment I had to step outside my ego, you know, like and just remove my ego from the complete situation and just apologize. I knew I wasn't necessarily wrong, but I knew I wasn't right either, you know. But I knew, like, historically, my ego would be like, I'm not wrong. I'm not apologizing for something. I know I'm not wrong. But I was just like, what am I, what am I creating this divide for? You know, like, this is somebody I care about. This is somebody I value their opinion. We just not seeing opposite ends of the spectrum. But I know they're more right than I am. So let me step out of my side, step outside of my ego. Let me... Let me be a better person. Let me be this person I keep trying to say I want to be, you know, and actually take the steps to be, you know, and challenging myself to be that person. So that fear of missing out is, like, also helping me, like, with my relationships. It's like I don't want to miss out on moments with people I care about as well, you know, for me and all this shit, you know. Like, if, it, if, if we got to spend time apart, we got to spend time apart. Like, like, that's life, you know. Like, you're going to have your moments of separation. But, like, there's no need to create unnecessary moments, you know where I'm going to look back on years from now, I'm like, damn, why did I let that argument, you know, last that long? Like, why didn't I mend that fence? Like, why did I let that divide happen when it didn't have to happen? Like, did my, did my ego really have to supersize that moment or could I have really just stepped outside of it and just say, you know what, yeah. let me check myself. It's an ongoing matter. Just... You live with the fear. You die. It's part of your life. It's an ongoing matter. So, um... And even though I I know tools and trade if you will helps with speaking speaking or understanding people, empathize with people that puts side ego comes to rescue quicker than rationality that hurt. So if someone does something to hurt you, or somebody does something that hurts you, before you're mind, before you're recognizing, your ego protects you. And if you move off of that, I still move off of that. Um, I just, I'm at a place where I, I I have been doing and I have to do better as far as taking a step back, breathing to respond. Because the one thing that feels worse 
then, you know, I guess pulling yourself at that moment. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sending it feels good, but it's a, it's a disgusting when you move up for ego and you the I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate being a fool and being a fool for the mess clean up. Based upon me not just taking a step back breathing and knowing this shit ain't me or this shit is deep. So that makes me to, to be better because I don't know how that I know how it is. I've done something which my into and I hate in that method because you have to decide everything and it's not private that things will go the way you want it to be. and you're not doing it either you're doing it because own as person meant to be accountable for you. So you're not in a place where we're civil anymore. You're in a place where if we get back to the terms of the deficit, you still in the effort on the action before. So now you can hold trying to climb yourself up to square one so you can start to quickly build. I hate that. I mean, you know, like, and that's that's really egocentric and really ego driven at that point. You know, like, it's not really about anybody else but your ego and uh, the compliment of your ego. Um, oh no, I still ain't got. The, I, I don't got none of the comments that's popping up. My last one yeah. is from King Groove and stuff. No comments. I was like trying to right now. No comments. <laughs> So, do you feel like there's any traits or behaviors we can use to like offset, you know, that fear of missing out? And or is mean, it behaviors? Yes, but you gotta be with yourself. There's a lot of people good with it. They need, they need to love it. They need the bar. They need. Like if you need to go out, if you socialize, it's something with you. It's something with you, and that's not some bad thing. Some people make a living, but know yourself enough to know that if you don't like the feeling of missing out or even have fear of, or you wish to get, you need to by yourself. You need to know. You need to know how to deal with yourself from the influence of others. You need to know how to discern from the people that listen to you know you should listen to versus the just talking normal. You have to be on your head. And by being I mean completely unpleasant. Completely pulling completely and not necessarily having to give everybody information. I remember my mother telling me she didn't really, she didn't really, how can I say, when I told her to take social media, she's the type that would take a break. I offered information, follow up. I didn't have to. I could have just up. Some people. Yeah. I was surprised you did. Yeah, I, I follow I. People feel they must give an explanation. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But oh, when to stop the extension I could give you my. can't reach my. If I keep it put. That's more than I can really do. If I can put my whole arm and I'm trying to pull you up, I can't get that. You pull me all the way down because I'm already giving you my arm. And if you pull me in, I did that. I did. I did. 
I know you. You're right, and at that point, like you can't really help nobody if you can't help yourself. So, why why give all that up yourself? I mean, the explanation, like I understood, like why you did it. You like, and you're right. Like some people do feel that need to give an explanation, and honestly, I think that's partly like rooted out of the um the fear of missing out as well too. You know, like let me give you an explanation why I won't be here. Like so, you guys will kind of keep me in the loop to an extent. You know, like I do feel like that's that's somewhat of like a connection as to why like people have the fear of missing out too. I do feel like that's. That's somewhat of it. Um, and I also feel like, you know, like, it's not even just like, just like that fear of like me. It's not, I feel like, you know, like, you know, like the people around you or had that fear of like, they feel like they're missing out on your life, you know? And like some people, it's not even like, like, Jetty, you, you one of the people that remind me of like, you're cool, like, whether you interact or don't interact with people, you know? But I can, honestly see it be the people around you that have the bigger issue like you're cool like but they have more of an issue that you aren't around that you aren't reaching out that you aren't communicating and that'll create the issue with you because it's just like yo i'm trying to live i'm trying to do this i'm trying to do that and the third and you giving me attitude because i'm not approaching you i'm not reaching out to you i'm not active in your life you need that connection like i'm cool like and I, I feel like that's where you're at. Like, I, I, I can really see, like, that's how your life is. Like, and it's more like the people around you. And, like, I, I do see that in more instances than not, like, where it's more so, like, the people that you're around and the people that, that are close to you that feel like that nag. And that's where the tug and pull of fear of missing out is more so. Like, and I actually use that with myself, too, because, like, within my family dynamic, I have that. You know, so it would be like, like today, it was supposed to be a big family event that I missed out on. It's, it's raining cats and dogs outside. I just didn't feel like traveling long distance to just to be in the rain, just to mingle and, mingle and mad over with the family for like 30 minutes. You know, like I could just send my love, call, whatever. Now, I know for a fact that the that divide creeps a certain... I don't want to say, well, I mean, it is a certain level of friction, you know, because, like, it is a, a certain level of, like, anguish and feelings that, like, my loved ones feel when I don't come to an event, you know, and it's like, they get their hopes up high, like, yo, I haven't seen you in a while, like, you know, we can get to kick it, I get to see your face, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, so when I don't come, I do feel, like, I like, even if it's not said verbally, you feel it, you feel the energy, you know, like, whether it's, is is like I can even feel it to an extent, like even like on social media, just like the in the language that's used in conversation. Like you feel the energy shift slightly, where it's just like you know what you should have been here. Like like do you think you're too big for the family or whatever the case may be or whatever whoever is high feeling, however they feeling, you know they feel a certain type of way when I'm not around, you know, and it's like they have that fear of missing out on what they feel like they missing out on my life. Like the moments they feel like they should be sharing with me, like the moments they feel like I should be sharing with them, like that they aren't a part of. And like, I can see that and I can understand that and I can actually sympathize with that. And I too share that same fear where it's just like, you know, I, I want to be around the family more. I want to spend more time with them. I want to share more moments with them. I understand how important this is like entirely, but at the same time, like how you said earlier, when you had that singular focus of what you want to do, you kind of got to prioritize what makes sense and when it makes sense. And you have to miss out, you know, like that's, that's part of life too. Like you're going to miss out on every on something. You're not going to catch every event, every outing, every gathering, you know, like, and if you are trying to catch it, you're going to burn yourself out pretty soon, you know, and that's something I, I've learned too within life. Like don't burn yourself out trying to make everybody happy, trying to satisfy everybody, trying to trying to even satisfy my own soul of, like, that need to want to make everybody happy. Because, like, within my heart, of course, I want to I wanna make everybody happy. I want to be around my loved ones. I want, I want them to feel my love and share my love with them. But realistically, I know I'm, I'm only human. And <laughs> like, at the end of the day, I got to be realistic with myself. Like, I can have all the love in the world, but, like, if you aren't meeting me somewhere in that, in that, in that spectrum of, like, trying to meet me halfway, then, like, you know, like, God bless, I love you. Hey, 
you're gonna just be mad at me, you know, like. It's gone to a point. It's gone to a point, okay? Where people think, or they empathize, I don't want to delete it. I don't want the emotional baggage that somebody trying to get up to that body. So, sir, I see the form of I know the key message, or even the first words of the book. And it's like, yo, open it, press it. I don't need it. I want it. Especially if I want people what it was. I was running. You know what I mean? Why well, for me to It's not easy because you build build connection. And you go somewhere. You know that you're going. You know it takes two. It takes you build. People change. So if I go, and it's not just everybody, myself and the people will change. If I my brick, if I used to build my straw, water, and rock, and I used to make it, and I worked for several years making brick with straw, rocks. One day I come across a spot to put me on game with clay. I'm not using straw, water, and rock. So the merchant sells straw, water, and rock. You might look at me and go, what's going on? You know, like, we were cool. But you see what I'm building? This merchant, this merchant, this merchant, I had to do with the shit that I had. And cool, it ain't no love. But y'all have y'all sales needed, y'all have any y'all inventory, y'all still rock, straw, and water. That's a good fee, but find the people. Because for what I'm doing, it ain't in a lot. I like that inventory itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to steal that line. I like that line, to inventory yourself. Cause like uh, enough, a lot of us aren't doing enough inventory or stuff. Like, or at least even sitting down to figure out what it is about ourselves that we need to improve upon. You know, and I, I speak for myself personally because like how you said earlier, like this is all stuff that I'm still working through myself. Like I'm I'm no master of like. Uh, having this control of not fearing like I'm missing out on anything or um, this control of emotions where I, I'm not bothered by things in the slightest. Like, this is all stuff I'm processing through day by day, event by event. I'm just trying to make, you know, each moment better than the next, you know. And, like, even the process of, you know, taking inventory, like, that's why I love that line, how you said it, like, because that, that's real. It's really, like, taking a checklist of, like, what you're doing, like, and assessing, like, what, what you're bringing and what you're not bringing to the quote-unquote table, you know. And honestly, having that sit, that sit down and, like, in that conversation with myself where I'm just, like, really, like, holding myself accountable for where I want to be and, and what I'm doing, you know, and, and the relationships I have and, and don't have, you know. And top, like, for me, I got to a point, you know, and, like, it was just more so out of frustration with where, like, things were going for me, like, as far as, like, just how I seen, like, my trajectory if I would have stayed in that path in life and it was just like i was just more so frustrated with myself like and just like where i allowed relationships to fester and fall to you know where i was just like you know like like i could blame this person i could blame that person i could do this and i could say they ain't do that but at the end of the day like what do i do like to make the situation better like besides just say yo you didn't do your part. Like, did I really, like, go above and beyond? Like, and, like, when I really started asking them questions, I was just like, you know, like, if, honestly, I was spending, I was spending enough time where I was, like, thinking about it, where I was just like, I'm spending too much time trying to figure out if I did do it, so I obviously didn't do it enough. If it don't come to my mind, like, yeah, like, immediately where I could think of, like, you know what, yeah, I have been going over and above and beyond. I probably have been, you know. And for them, they probably feeling the same way. So it's just like, you know, 
it's another form of like how I was saying, like I'm learning how to step out my ego. You know, I'm I'm learning how to maintain my ego because you you do have to have the ego to a certain extent. Like you can't be a walkover and just walk through life with like this, you know. Everybody is perfect, Bob. You know, trying to uplift others without a certain type of ego to you. You know, like so you do need your ego. It's essential, but at the same time, it's essential to have it in check where it doesn't oversee every moment that you're going through, oversee every event, like oversee like any conversation you have where it's just like I can't even step outside of my ego to allow the moment to be the moment. You know, so. That's where I'm really at, Jetty. Like, like, like this whole topic. That's really where my mindset was at. Where it was just like, you know what? This is this is learning how to adjust to your ego. Like, learning how, learning when and where to like, you know, flex that masculine masculine muscle. You know, when to be like, you know what? I got I got to flex on him. and knowing when to, you know, I got to step back. I got to learn. I got to assess. I got to I got to shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know. So. See the lady from yesterday that I turned the volume down. I'm not sure if that helped. Oh, just turn the volume down. Hopefully, you know what? Let me try. Hopefully, it doesn't kick me off the live. But let me try. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, this sounds worse, worse though. <laughs> Actually, oh no, keep on talking, because I like that one. Keep on talking. It might have just been initially. Right, so I hear the right, so I hear what y'all saying now. I hear it inside these AirPods. It, it sounds clearer though now to me. I don't know how the audience feel, but if they cool with it, I'm cool with it because okay. it sounds clear to See, me. The lady said it's fine. That actual butterfly said yes, much better. Check. All right, so I apologize. My fault, y'all. From here on out, I'm going to be. She said, wait, no, it's still doing it. Ah, I still got to figure life out. I really got to figure life out. You know what I'm saying? But she said it's a little better. All right, cool. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm saying. It's better than before, like for me. like. Like you hear like it's kind of like you know how like the TV be at night like when you got it, like a little staticky like slightly it's kind of like that like it's not annoying it's not bothering you but you hear it though like, I feel that <laughs> that African butterfly says yeah sometimes you have to be okay with people being wrong about you some people are determined to misunderstand you that the gem of that statement cannot be understated. And it took me a while for me to get there because a part of the certain people, because I have the heart where I want to be understood. I don't want people to, to take my words wrong and feel some type of way if I say something. I don't want people to take my actions wrong and feel some type of way if I do something. It took me a long time to get to a place where... I, I I just have to do for myself and not give a fuck how people feel. And when I say people, I'm not you know, I mentioning friends and family. I'm just talking about the periphery. Because friends and family going to get the communication. And y'all know. Y'all know who y'all are. But as far as the periphery, and it's not like I don't give a fuck. Like It's like the conversation. Like, oh, fuck you. You did this to me. I don't give a fuck. No, it's just I have to do this for myself. I can't be here doing this for you or for anybody else. I have to do this for myself. And even if I am a part of a community, I have to pull away so that I can strengthen myself so that I'm worth something when I come back. If I come back. Because here's the, here's the kicker. You still need people no matter what you do. Even if you don't return to the community that you left, you're going to join another community. So no matter what you do, elevation is going to require you to, to I don't want to say coagulate, even though that's the word that's cooked in my head. Elevation is going to require you to galvanize with like minds so that you can build greater things. You ain't going to be able to do it with yourself or no matter what the fuck it is that you're doing. But I guarantee you this, you ain't going to be able to build no mansion that you can live in if you're still playing with Lego blocks. 
nigga learn masonry or something. Cause I guarantee you still playing with Lego blocks. You can build a you can build a Mike Tyson man out of Lego blocks. I guarantee you that shit gonna be dead by the time the week over. Cause it's toys. It's plastic. If you don't know nothing about masonry, if you don't know nothing about foundation, you just made something that looks pretty. That I and you know like oh no go ahead go ahead oh no i was just about to follow up on what you were saying like especially with the building of community like part of stepping back is so you can figure out what community you belong to like that time alone away from your loved ones like that's vital like as as people like it's we grow faster the further we stretch away from that safe place from that comfort that comfort that we call home like the the more we deviate from it like it do challenge us in a way that helps us grow and pushes us further along that path like for me like the the biggest moments of growth like that like were moments i stepped outside of my comfort zone were moments i did something that was completely out of my norm whether that's moving whether that's being a a different location, a different career path, or just like even the people I interact with, you know, and just like maybe like it's been moments where I had to like cut off like my closest friends, like not because of anything they've done, but because like I just felt too comfortable within my day to day presence within them that I just knew I wasn't challenging myself, you know. And when you do take that time to like challenge yourself to figure out what it is that that's driving you, that that anything that's going to get you up in the morning to motivate you to keep on doing it. Because it's something within us all that motivates us every day. Like, whether you know it or not, it's something that gets you out that bed each morning to continue the life that you're doing. Like, whether you acknowledge it or not, or know what that purpose is, it's a reason, you know. And the sooner you figure out that reason, it makes life a lot more enjoyable. And when you're walking in that purpose of you finding out that you know what you want to do like you start figuring you start meeting like the world kind of brings you the people that you need in your community the people that's going to help you uplift your dreams and goals like and I, speaking for myself there's plenty of times like even now where like in my day-to-day -day, i'm encountering people that beneficial to the growth of where i want to be and that i didn't even know like even within my co-workers at work I found different people like that's put me on to information about taxes, put me on to information about fashion, how to do this, how to do that. But it's more so me opening up myself and allowing myself to be, you know, vulnerable enough to understand and know and know what they learn. You know, I mean, know, learn what they know. You know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a couple of comments that I want to get to. That African butterfly said, yup, because people always see things through the lens of their perception. No matter how clear you try to be, they might still not be able to see from your point. That's absolutely true. That's well. And as a side, African butterfly. I got your painting. We got to set something up. It's over here in this corner. I'm not going to show it to the people. We're going to keep this between us. If you give me permission, I will just so you can see. But it sustained the damage when I moved. And I was able to finally cover it up. It looks beautiful. It runs with the nature thing. I got you. I got you. I got to set something up. But you got to come to the city because life and <laughs> life. Then life. But um, see, the lady said, I realize that everything you put out is a seed and you will truly know what type of plant you have nurtured when it's harvest time and you start digging up what you planted. The proof is in the pot. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact for sure. So we're closing in on yeah, the hour yeah, mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to tell everybody about the, all the yes. changes that's coming this way? In here for everybody who's watching outside of the live on YouTube, on whatever platforms this will be. This will be a snippet of this will also be on Twitter. So this is the third season, and this is the last season as you know it. There are major things that are changing within the dynamics of PDM. One of our main things is we have a Patreon. Yes, we have a Patreon for this season. 
in which we will be accepting the first 100 patrons to pay as you will. It's set at $3, but you pay as you will. If it's lower than $3, it's love. We will return whatever that you pay that is not the $3 limit. If it's over, it's love. If it's three, it's all love. But the first 100 people pay as you will. We are setting up a list of exclusive content that the Patreon will have. After this year, PBM will no longer be exclusively on IG Live. In fact, we're only going to be doing lives on IG. We're going to move the platform to YouTube, to Patreon. We're going to move it to these other platforms that are going to allow us to give you more exclusive content. It's been a little, IG has done as well, but it's been a little bit too rigid being under the IG protocol terms and conditions and the challenge is to elevate us to a place where we will be able to provide better quality to the people who have been supporting us and the people who continue to join the ship and to know what PBM is all about. So y'all go to PBM's Patreon and it's in the link. The link is in the bio of PBM Talk Show. Y'all donate what y'all will. The first hundred people only to this year. And when I say this year, I mean for this day, October, what is it, the 2nd to October the 2nd, 2023. That's when the close off happens. First 100 people pay as well. Afterwards, we're going to run payment tests. And we have a few things that we're going to introduce as far as things that Dad is going to be doing as a chef, the things that I will be doing as an MC slash an artist. We have some things. But yes, we. This will be the last season, as y'all know, of the PBM on this IG platform. So check out the Patreon, check out the Patreon, check out our link. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Oh, no, that was perfect. You know, like, definitely, definitely subscribe to the Patreon. We're going to have cooking classes up on there, cooking lessons, you know. So definitely get, re get your pots and pans ready because we're going to be doing a lot of cooking, guys. You know, especially with the winter being here, we doing we starting off with some some warm, fulfilling food item choices. You know, that's gonna keep y'all warm, toasty in the house. You know, cause the way it's already done started, I can anticipate a cold ass winter coming shortly. <laughs> so no, that's all I got. And subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. I see the numbers. Well, we see the numbers going up. We love the action that you guys are showing on YouTube already. But continue to like, follow, and subscribe that channel as well. You know, we're gonna have more material coming up on that. And uh, oh yeah, and Wednesdays. You know, you ain't telling them about Wednesdays. What's happening Wednesdays? I, I might have missed that part of me. Yeah, oh, you're yeah, not yeah. gonna be I'm here. Be you know. Here for Once again, I said it at the beginning of the show, so I'll reemphasize. I'll reinstate. I'll reemphasize that I pulled away from social media for the last 30 days to get up on my diet and to readjust as well for the fact that yes, I am a I am a daddy now. I, my child was born like three weeks ago, so things are a bit different as far as my sustainability on PBM every. Twice a week. Nah, nah, nah. In fact, Daddy Duties is calling me right now, so you know I'm only going to be on here for Sundays. Dash is definitely be going to hold it down on Wednesdays and more on now though. And once again, Patreon, 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 y'all go. Y'all throw a little something into the pot. The first hundred people will be able to get exclusive membership to our Patreon before the payment tiers become the norm. So y'all go, y'all go, y'all go. Do that. Do that. Do that. Yes, yes. And you know, with Daddy not doing the Wednesdays, we got two new hosts uh, that's going to help me out on Wednesdays. Uh, one is a young lady named Kima. The second is our brother, Juice World. So they're going to be participating with me Wednesday evenings, you know, so guys get comfortable with their faces and show them some love too, you know. Like we appreciate what they're going to bring to the, the platform and help Bro, PBM as a whole, you know, and that's all I really got to say for tonight, you know. Unless you wanna, you wanna do the follow wrap up so you nah, can I'm get out. back to Daddy Duty. Nah, nah. 
I don't want to talk about princess time. Send out. See the lady said we may have misinformation. Can y'all may have to reiterate important things y'all want us to know? But we got y'all that we're going to hold us down. I'll send. I'll send the Patreon link to you. And Appreciate I'll that point. Some points of things that we're going to be adding to the Patreon over time. See the lady. I'll make sure that I reach out to you personally about that. And that African butterfly. Thank you very much. No, I haven't shared the baby's name yet. No, I haven't shared with my partner. Keeping all that on the hush, but it's only going to be on the hush for that long. I'm waiting until her first photo shoot, you know what I mean? And then I'll put pictures out there and I'll put things eventually. But right now, we're keeping things on the wraps. But I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Are you doing a photo shoot? Okay. I see you. Jenny Cannon out here. Yeah, look. Y'all, let me dash. I love you. Y'all already know PBM this Wednesday. Y'all tune in. Y'all heard what the brother's saying. We're going to have a special guest. Dash is going to hold it down. I love y'all. I'm out.